I was really excited when the peer helpers came to me and they wanted to start this fundraising drive for the flood victims in Louisiana. Peer helpers are asking you to give back to Louisiana. <laughs> More in today's show. The football team already has one win under their belt. In sports, we will cover more details on their victory against Gabby over the weekend. The football team wasn't the only group to travel to Mobile this weekend. In today's entertainment, we'll recap the band's performance. These stories plus more headlines are coming your way on today's THS TV. With Louisiana in desperate need of assistance, with Louisiana in desperate need of assistance, an organization at Thompson is reaching out to help. Good morning, I'm Sammy Chatham, and I'm Matthew Killingsworth, and this is THS TV. A group of students is working to help Louisiana flood victims. The floods in Louisiana have left residents without many basic needs, but with the help of Alabaster Community, assistance. Assistance will soon be on its way. The Louisiana Donation Drive is asking for several different types of goods, and the peer helpers are the driving force behind this movement. I was really excited when the peer helpers came to me and they wanted to start this fundraising drive for the flood victims in Louisiana. I just think it's important for us to all give back, and so many people have helped us in Alabama after some natural disasters that we have had assigned a category of supplies to bring. Freshmen can bring s supplies, sophomores can bring first aid, juniors can bring toiletries, and drop off donations in room 503 in store and student services. With all the homecoming excitement going around, we can't forget about the powder puff game. Reporter Crazy Coker has all the details. The girls trade their pom poms in for a pair of football cleats. For me. This thing isn't on. This one is number two. It's song. it's blue. It's so much fun because we have that we cheer for, and it's really different. Like we usually don't get out on the field. Okay, powder puff is when the girls um, get to play flag football, and the boys get to cheer for us. On September 22nd at 6:30, the game will begin and to play. You can get a sign-up sheet for Miss Tetstones in room 125. If you want to be a cheerleader or a player, the fee is $25, and to be a coach, it's $10, including T-shirts for all. For more information, you can text at THSPPUFF to 81010. The newcomers are excited for the fun times to begin, but for the returning, it's all about the win, and we can't forget the audience that cheers them on. Yes, I'm going to be attending, and I'm really excited to see which class wins this year. Don't forget to come to the game on September 22nd at 6.30 to see which team takes the win. If you want to be a player or a cheerleader, cost is $25, and you can go to Miss Tetstones in room 125 for more information. Reporting for THS-TV on the Powder Puff Game, I'm Gracie Coker. Schools and businesses from all over the country will have Monday, September 5th off week to and that has people talking to social media. People celebrate in many different ways from having a lazy day to going to the beach. Citizens everywhere make a point to enjoy this national holiday. What are you doing for Labor Day? Tweet us at THS News TV with your hashtag Labor Day weekend plans. Now let's take a look at other hot topics in today's national headlines. Last year, the debate over flying the Confederate flag sparked protests due to its controversial history. And two Mississippi schools have decided that they will no longer support the symbol. Mississippi State University, along with the Mississippi University for Women, will no longer fly the Mississippi State flag due to the Confederate flag being present in the design. Florida is expecting a wet one this Labor Day weekend as Tropical Storm Hermine grows stronger. The storm is traveling towards the North Florida Gulf Coast and has the ability to be a life-threatening storm. A hurricane warning is currently in effect. A SpaceX rocket exploded yesterday in Cape Canaveral, Florida. 
The explosion occurred at 9.07 a.m. Eastern Time and was during a fuel test. No one was injured due to the rockets only being used to transport supplies such as satellites to the International Space Station. So uh, I, I know you're a football player, so how do you think y'all are going to do in the game this weekend? I think we'll do really good. Uh, we worked all, we worked really hard all week, and uh, we prepared really well, and we watched lots of film and studied up really well. So I think we'll do really good. Um, I've got more in today's sports. But first, we've got your needs to know in today's announcements. We'll be right back with more THS TV. Still to come on THS TV. This past weekend, our varsity football team took on Godby High School. After this break. We'll recap how the first game of the season went. The peer helpers at our school have created a new Instagram page that may tell us a little more about the staff of ACS. Stay tuned to find out more details. You're watching THS TV, your source for sports. This past weekend, the varsity football team played against Godby High School and earned their first victory on the off, of the offseason of the season. The THS TV reporter Sammy Chatham, Sammy Chatham. Tonight, the varsity football team travels to Tuscaloosa County to face the Wildcats. The Warriors enter the game 1-0, and the Wildcats are on a turnaround from the last season, entering tonight's matchup 2-0. The Warriors defeated the Wildcats 27-0 last year behind standout performance by QB Walker Lott. This past Saturday, the varsity football team, along with members of the band, cheerleading squads, and the visual ensemble, headed to Mobile, Alabama to play the Godby Cougars. After lots of preparation for the first game, the team was able to take a win over Godby with a score of 27-14. With wins comes happy coaches, and on Saturday there were definitely some smiles on the sidelines. I think we had some bright spots on both sides. I think the offense had some bright spots. I think the defense played really well uh, most of the time. So I think both sides had uh, a big part of us winning today. The varsity team now has the responsibility of preparing for their next game. The team plays again on September 2nd against Tuscaloosa County. With a winning streak so far in the 2016 season, the players are anxious to see if they can duplicate their Saturday victory. Uh, honestly, we're going to do against Tuscaloosa County like we'll do everybody else. No L's this season. All W's. And we're going to get a ring. For more information on Thompson football, keep tuning in to THS TV. I'm Sammy Chatham. The varsity football team travels to Tuscaloosa County to face the Wildcats. The Warriors enter the game 1-0 as the Wildcats are on a major turnaround from last season, entering tonight's matchup 2-0. The Warriors defeated the Wildcats 27-0 last year behind standout performance by QB Walker Lott. Sophomore Caleb Raglan is, on a hat, is off, coming off a standout performance in the 27-14 win over Gobby last week. The defense led by senior linebacker Nick Mobley will look to hold off the Wildcats' explosive offense. The game will be played at Tuscaloosa County and kickoff is at 7. College football is back. That means no more football, football is Saturdays. Follow reporter Constance McKnight as, the, as she gives you a, re, a preview of the 2016 season. College football is finally here. The NCAA officially kicked off their football season yesterday with multiple games all over the country, but some are close to home. The Tennessee Volunteers hosted Appalachian State and the Commodores of Vandy hosted South Carolina. Defending national champions and the number one spot holder on the AP poll, the University of Alabama will go head-to-head -head Saturday with USC at 7 p.m. I think they'll do great. Um, they've always done well coming off a national championship. A couple years ago, they went back-to-back, -back and um, I'm sure they can do it again. The tie went 14-1 and won last season with only one loss early in their season to Ole Miss. Uh, I expect the Tide to do pretty well this season. Um, I'm expecting another national championship. Roll Tide. The Auburn Tigers will also have a big game on Saturday night, coming off a 7-6 record. The Tigers will face the Clemson Tigers. Uh, 
I don't know if he'll get the win, but I mean, I, it's going to be a close game, whether it's a win or a loss. The Clemson Tigers are runner up to the national title, naming them the second best in the country. Michigan State and Oklahoma, the other two teams to make it to the 2015 college playoffs, will be battling the Paladines of Furman and the Houston Cougars. The University of Alabama at Birmingham has decided they will renew their football program and will officially kick off their season in the fall of 2017. I am so excited. UAB football was such a huge part of our family and how my husband and I met, and we're excited to get to take our daughter to her first Blazer game. Just like the Tide, Tigers, and Blazers, all NCAA teams want to set a sturdy footmark towards their spot in the college football playoffs. Reporting for THS TV, I'm Constance McKnight. Which four teams will make the college football playoffs? Tweet us at THS News TV to be future, featured on the show. From the high school gym to college turf, we've got the details today in national sports headlines. Serbian tennis player Novak Djokovic played in the first round of the U.S. Open yesterday, winning his match. During his match, Djokovic double faulted and started grabbing his arm. After the game, Djokovic said that after his double fault, his arm began hurting really badly and that he would work on it. Former Air Force star D. Dallas, who set an NCAA career rushing record for quarterbacks and finished sixth in Heisman Trophy voting in 1989, was killed in an automobile accident in suburban Atlanta on Monday morning. In soccer news, U.S. men's soccer team coach Jurgen Klinsmann has called in 26 individuals to play in the World Cup qualifying games. One name on the list is striker Josie Altidore, but some faces from the past will not be joining. Players like Clint Dempsey will be out due to an irregular heartbeat and midfielder Gaiesi Zardes from having an injury in last Sunday's game. That's all for today's sports. Tune in next week for more updates on Thompson Sports. Now to Matthew with more news. The Pure Health are spreading positivity not only through the hallways, but also over social media. Inspired by the Humans of New York project, which was made famous by photographer B Brandon Stanton, the peer helpers have begun sharing the stories of faculty members and students. The project is all about snapping pictures of someone associated with Alabaster City Schools and then asking him or her to summarize their story. Humans of ACS is an Instagram account that Peer Helpers started, and me and Holly run it. And we basically just share stories of teachers and students from ACS. This project can be found on Instagram. The Peer Helpers will be working on this project all year long, and it will help students and faculty members from all over the school system to learn a little bit more about each other. For more information on the Humans of ACS project, Keep tuning in to THS TV. Once again, Alabaster City Council elections have taken place and there are some new faces on the council. In Ward 1, Sophie Martin had a significant victory against challenger Lee Cunningham, earning 84% of the vote. In Ward 2, Rick Ellis defeated Matt Penhale. In Ward 4, Greg Farrell defeated Rick Walters. And in Ward 5, Russell Bledsoe beat out Jemiah Alexander-Williams. Ward 3 and Ward 6 incumbents Stacy Rakestraw and Scott Brakefield ran unopposed and were approved to continue in their seats. City officials say Alabaster's voter turnout was significantly lower than the last election at 17.2 percent, compared to the 2012 election at 23 percent. Keep tuning in to THS TV for more news from around our community. So, did y'all hear about how the band performed this weekend at God mm -hmm. Well, the football team wasn't the only team that went to Mobile. So did our, so did our very own Marching Southern Sounds. They're actually doing a classic play that they're performing. We also got Kanye coming up in entertainment, so you want to stick around for that. And we'll tell you more about that in today's entertainment. But first, Ashley has your local forecast in today's Warrior Weather. We'll be right back. Still to come on THS TV. Varsity football team wasn't the only group that performed on Saturday. The Marching Southern Sounds also made an appearance in Mobile, and in today's entertainment, we'll give you the scoop. This year, some new classes have been in addition to some student schedules. Stay tuned to Course Corner, where you'll find out all the new classes being offered. This is THS TV, Thompson High School's source for entertainment.
Good morning. I'm Ashley Ryan, and I'm here to bring you today's Warrior weather. Today, you can expect it to be a little cloudy with a low chance of rain. The highs will be in the low 90s, and the lows will be in the high 60s. These next few days will remain partly cloudy. This weekend, the highs will be in the upper 80s and low 90s, along with lows in the upper 60s and low 70s. The chances of rain will stay low over the course of the next few days. Monday and Tuesday of next week will be very warm with highs in the lower 90s and lows around 70. That's all for today's Warrior Weather. Tune in next week for more weather updates. Last weekend, the Marching Southern Sounds made some noise at the Godby football game with their performance of Les Miserables. After months of practice, the members of the band got the chance to perform their pro progress on the football field. The band will continue to perform pieces from the classic play throughout the football season. For more information on the Marching Southern Sounds, keep tuning in to THS TV. Kanye West is hitting the road for a 39-date St. Pablo tour in Indiana. The rapper was interviewed about a concert that, and he shared some details about his tour. West has risen up on a small platform above all his fans instead of performing on a stage. West said that at least eight months of planning went into the production, traveling around the world, meeting with the best stage designers, and hopes that the experience will come out soon. Hollywood is full of gossip, and sometimes it can be hard to tell what's real and what's not. Let's take a closer look at today's So True or So False to see if you can guess which one of these headlines you believe to be the real deal. The 2016 Video Music Awards featured a variety of famous faces, but none of them were Taylor Swift. And rumors have spread that Beyonce apparently had some bad blood with the pop star, which resulted in Queen Bee making sure Swift was banned from this year's VMAs. And this rumor is so false. Talk of Beyonce prohibiting Swift from attending the 2016 VMAs spread after a headline about the star being, quote, the most powerful woman in music, end quote, was publicized by media takeout. Beyonce had nothing to do with Swift not attending the event, but the real reason may shock you. When you think A-list celebrity, you don't typically think of their duties as U.S. citizens, but that could change. Swift was supposedly not at the VMAs due to, yep, you guessed it, jury duty. And although it may sound made up, this rumor is so true. Swift was in Nashville this past Monday to see if she would be chosen to sit in as a juror to a court case. Although Swift was not chosen, her appearance at the courthouse certainly came as a surprise for some of the possible jurors. Fans of the CBS reality show Big Brother may have been surprised to hear that the summer show could be extending its airtime into the fall season. And luckily for BB superfans, this rumor is all true. CBS has confirmed that the show will have a second season this fall, obviously after the Big Brother finale on September 21st, but that the show will be streamed on CBS All Access and will still be hosted by Big Brother presenter Julie Chen. Music, movies, and more, we've got the latest go gossip at Hollywood News and today's Hollywood Headlines. A few new stars have announced their presence on the new Dancing with the Stars season. Olympians Ryan Lotke and Lauren Hernandez, as well as talk show host Amber Rose, former rapper Vanilla Ice and country singer Jonna Kramer, and country singer Jonna Kramer are just a few of the new cast names. Selena Gomez has announced that she is taking time off due to her medical conditions with lupus. She says she has been having depression and anxiety attacks it has not yet been announced whether her next few tours have been canceled. Paget Brewster is now a regular on Criminal Minds once again. After two weeks after two weeks after Thomas Gibson was fired, fans may be anxious to see a familiar face on the show once again. 
Now fans of the show will have to see how Criminal Minds pulls off the show without Gibson and with the new returning member, Brewster. That's all for today's entertainment. Tune in next week for more entertainment updates. Now let's toss it to Will with today's Course Corner. Welcome to Course Corner, where we highlight some of the classes for this school year. This week on Course Corner, we shine the spotlight on foreign cultures. Foreign cultures is taught by Charlie Lindley Hamlin. Hamlin says she has introduced she introduced the course because she loves how cultures develop. In the, in, the, in the class, they have been studying American culture, and soon they will focus to Spain. She, th she thinks that many people are stuck in, in their own little bubble, which, is, which makes it easy to forget about the other cultures around the world. This class is meant to open their eyes to other cultures. If you have any questions about the class, visit Miss Hamlin in room 404. That's all for today's Course Corner. Tune in every Friday for new courses here at THS. Back, now back to Sammy and Matthew for more news. The Student, Student Government Association is looking for leaders to represent the freshman class. Freshmen interested in becoming an SGA member will submit their applications the Monday after homecoming week. After two weeks, students will begin the election process where the entire freshman class will nominate a president, a vice president, a secretary, and many more positions to represent the ninth grade. Because it gives you an opportunity to make decisions for your class and the school so it can benefit the whole, the students as best as possible to make them have a great feeling about the school year. I've been on it sophomore, junior, and senior year. I've been, I was sophomore class treasurer and SGA treasurer junior and senior year. If you have any questions, contact Ms. Holbrooks in room 231. We've got you up to date on how to get involved in student government. And now Ashley has you prepared for weather under the Friday night lights. Ashley? If you're looking to attend one of the many football games tonight, here's your Friday night forecast. Tonight, the Warriors play at Tuscaloosa County. The temperature should be in the mid-80s to start off the night and continue to fall. The chance of rain is at 0%. Pelham plays tonight at home against Benjamin Russell. The, at kickoff, the temperature should be around 82, and it could get as low as 77. That's all for your Friday night forecast. Tune in next week for more weather updates. So, are y'all excited about the game tonight? Definitely. I'm considering going. You know, I also have to write a paper, so I'll have to choose which one I want to. I know which one I want to do, yeah. <laughs> but which one I have to do. Yeah, I was also deciding whether or not to go to the game, but I got stuff to do yeah. at school. <laughs> I'll definitely be there. You'll yeah, <laughs> you'll be playing in it, right? Yep. So hopefully people will be there to cheer you on. That's all for today's news. <laughs> and follow us on Twitter for updates on events happening at THS this week. Have a great day.